You're watching Morning at NTV. Welcome back and you're still watching Morning at NTV with me, Romeo Busiku and Malaki Villa. Right about now we are heading into the press review where we get to dissect the contents of the Daily Monitor. Mala, you could only get this newspaper for only 2,000 shillings. Mala, isn't this cheap? <laughs> <laughs> right, and just in case you don't like the hard copies, you can also subscribe to the e version of the same. Um, cheap is relative, so it depends on who you're talking to. <laughs> but of Less course, than a uh, dollar, interesting, but then, yeah. interesting story mm. that uh, we did highlight yesterday. Seems like now is a big story this morning in the Daily Monitor. You want to do that? To the like, like I told you the other day <laughs> while we're talking about climate change, and you were saying everyone should do their part. Mm. Well, indeed, we did our part to talk about it, this issue. The Daily Monitor did its part to investigate the issue. So right now, UCC has come out to say SIM card registration is on hold. Right. Police, but, but anyway, police is still anyway analyzing the, the details right there. But the story broke yesterday and we are seeing some headway right now on the 8th of October. UCC coming out to say they are suspending the registration exercise. Now let's just get a lot of the details right here in the Daily Monitor that you can only get at 2,000 shillings this beautiful Tuesday morning. Uganda Communications Commission has suspended registration of all SIM cards using refugee identity cards and its attestation and attestation letters from the office of the Prime Minister. Now, the suspension was announced by the UCC Executive Director, Godfrey Mutabazi, in a press statement yesterday following Daily Monitor's story that exposed a scam where unscrupulous people in town were registering mobile telecom SIM cards using forged refugee identity cards. Mr. Mutabazi says the reference was made to the investigative findings as reported in the Daily Monitor newspaper dated 7th October under the article Scam Rocks SIM Card Registration. Now, the Commission has, as a result of this, directed all telecom operators to suspend the registration. Mutabazi also stated that UCC is in the process of formulating stringent procedures with the Office of the Prime Minister on the validation of the refugee cards and attestation letters to check further SIM registration fraud. Now, Mr. Mutabazi further warned that no further registration will be permitted with the above-mentioned documents and a telecom operator identified to carry out registration from the date of notice may be penalized accordingly. Kampala Metropolitan Police spokesman Patrick Onyango told this newspaper by telephone that they were still analyzing the CAD registration processes before they could start investigations. He was non committed on when they would start the investigations into the ongoing SIM card registration, registration fraud in that regard. Mm -hmm. But our efforts to speak to Mr. Gerard Menya, the Commissioner of Refugees in the OPM were futile as it did not reply to our repeated calls nor our text messages. That could be a red flag right there, Mala, meaning that they knew what was happening, but they were actually silent. But it's good that they've come out to say that, hey, we're halting these particular processes mm -hmm. for further, to allow for further investigation. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see how this one goes. Yeah, um, well, the Commission of, for Refugees in the OPM is not replying any of the messages from police or the UCC in this regard. So that could mean that they knew what was happening and they knew it was highly unscrupulous. Grab those details on page four of the Daily Monitor is a big story this morning Indeed. in the Daily Monitor. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go back a little bit back on page three of the Daily Monitor. We all saw this. We were all waiting for this. And I think this is the greatest thing that marked um, yesterday being the 7th of October True. 2019. Take Two aircraft coming through. Yes, under Uganda Airlines. Finally, they did touch down yesterday in the afternoon. And so uh, we are having a big story on page three of the Daily Monitor and uh, Uganda Airlines to expand beyond East Africa thanks to this new two aircraft, of course, uh, that touched down yesterday at the Entebbe International Airport. Of course, that brings the number, total number currently to four aircraft under Uganda Airlines. And of course, uh, like they're saying, they're looking to expand to East Africa now with the four. Of course, uh, we are currently flying to Nairobi. We are also flying to Bujumbura. We are also flying to Tanzania that's Dar es Salaam. We're going to Juba and to Mogadishu. Now, with the coming of these two new aircraft, of course, uh, the management of the Uganda Airlines is saying that they're looking to stretch further to the regional, you know, East African region, of course, uh, with other touch points that have not yet been catered for so far. Of course, in December 2020, we'll be expecting, you know, um, we will actually be receiving another two of our A330-800 new aircraft. And, of course, uh, this... Um, 
authorities say that uh, this particular aircraft that is coming through in December 2020, of course, uh, yeah, we're giving it a margin of December 2020 to mm -hmm. January 2021. Um, of course, they're saying that um, this aircraft that will come at that particular phase and time will cater for overseas markets. We do know that uh, one of the critical markets is China. Um, there's high demand for Ugandan fish in the China, mar China market, and so they're looking forward to that, of course, uh, with regards to nothing but purely business mm -hmm. and to ensure that uh, they actually open up the external markets mm -hmm. um, to the local farmer, to the local fishery, mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of players. Mm -hmm. And um, fishermen will have a smile, I think, on this one. Um, let's see. But uh, that is in 2020, 2021. <laughs> so um, uh, good things, good things happening for Uganda. Hopefully this uh, will um, trickle down in terms of the economic, mm -hmm. positive economic effects trickle down to the common one, Anji. So we are looking at 10 planes by 2021. No, we're Currently, looking at are we six. Are we having six right now? We are having four right now. We are now. having four right, right. now. So if we're having four and then four more are coming between two more December. Are coming. Right. So there are two or four. We are having four right now. We yeah. had two initially. Now mm -hmm. two came yesterday. Mm -hmm. We're also expecting another two, at least two. There will be two or four. Yeah. Two, two. Yeah, two of now, four. Now, in total, in, to, in totality, <laughs> we're expecting to yes. have six. Um, of mm. course, that is according to the budget that was, you know, um, mm. earmarked for this particular purchase of six aircraft. Mm -hmm. um, according to, you know, experts that are coming through and uh, the estimations in terms mm. of the budget, mm -hmm. they allocated 2.9 trillion Uganda shillings to purchase mm -hmm. six aircraft. Mm -hmm. So far, we have four. Mm -hmm. So we have what? So a two more will be two, coming in in December 2020 coming. and January 2021. Thereabout. Well, the State Minister for Works, General Katumba, Wamala has advised Ugandans to support the airlines and desist from negativity. You've, you've been hearing some of the yes, negative yes, yes, which comments is coming in from social media, yeah. this and that. But then he's uh, asking Ugandans to support the airlines and shouldn't uh, be very, very negative in that. The Guardian Director General of Uganda Civil Aviation Authority, Mr. David Impango, said UCCA will give Uganda Airlines all the assistance required in its operations. And the Uganda Airlines Board Chairperson, Mr. Godfrey Ahabwe, said an investment in the national airline is an investment in the, castri in the country's infrastructure. He says our growth and service facilitates the growth and success of our country through promotion of tourism and building international relations. Well, we've been talking about how the arrival of these planes will boost foreign tourism. But mm -hmm. then me, I'm too concentrated when it comes to domestic tourism. What can be done mm -hmm. to promote domestic tourism? We are living in a country where the locals aren't, you know, very excited when it comes to tourism, touring their own country. We see foreigners living as far as London, Dubai, to just come here and enjoy, you know, the good sites right here in Uganda, but then the locals, the locals, the locals, locals. What can we do to get the locals engaged, Mala? You know, when I look at it, and for me, I look, I'm just looking at it from a business perspective. Um, we're expecting in totality we'll be having six. Mm -hmm. Currently, we're flying to just a few destinations. Mm -hmm. We're looking at Nairobi, we're mm -hmm. looking at Bujumbura, mm -hmm. we're looking at Dar es Salaam, Juba, Mogadishu. Currently, mm -hmm. uh, we haven't yet. Only you know, five destinations. We haven't yet, um, you know, um, exhausted uh, the region in terms of uh, our flights to these mm -hmm. particular points mm -hmm. um, because you can imagine only two aircraft. Mm -hmm. That's what we had mm -hmm. really uh, mm -hmm. in the starting point. Now with the two that have come, that came yesterday, mm -hmm. of course, we're looking to expand to that. But according to government, they're saying at the end of the day, okay, fine. Once you balance it out, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of business and the prospects and you do your projections right, um, uh, I'm sure they sit down in their boards and they look mm -hmm. at the numbers because you have to play a game of the numbers lest lest the taxpayer mm -hmm. suffers mm -hmm. remember um they're pumping a lot of money the revival of the uganda airlines you can imagine uh we're looking at operations of 258 mm -hmm. billion just in the first year for mm -hmm. them for operations, you can imagine, started, exactly. Yes. And that is just operations. Now look at the cost, um, add that up with the cost of buying this particular aircraft, add that with the cost of the employees and every other thing, of mm -hmm. course, that comes with the airspace. Mm -hmm. um, once you look at the cost, of course, they're saying that, hey, it's not for profits now. It will take some time for us to, to you know, to break even. Mm -hmm. So if I was the manager there, I would look at routes that will give us back this money True. that we've invested mm -hmm. in. So once they start balancing out, um, do we have, do we, do we focus on the external routes or mm -hmm. internal routes? Mm -hmm. And when they do their projections, of course, with the, you know, mannerisms of the citizens, um, which 
which of the two options uh, you know will give us back our monies mm -hmm. you can imagine a flight or an aircraft just staying um, at the bay or at the airport without um, you know customers in a day mm -hmm. that's lost money that's Indeed. lost and wasted time and money as well so I'm, I'm thinking in terms of business they're just looking at which um, regions can we leverage on to ensure mm -hmm. that we you know um, make sure that we are on our journey to breaking even stroke mm -hmm. maybe in the future making profit as well for the benefit of the Ugandan economy and also for the benefit of the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. So that's the balance. It's quite tricky. Um, uh, it's not all doomed for local tourism because mm -hmm. you do have private players in that. Um, we have different, you know, um, airlines, well, mini, mini airlines the why, that are playing in that particular sector. The reason why many Ugandans were not running to these local private airlines was because of the expenses. They were too expensive. Right. So we, we thought maybe with the arrival of these uh, uh, bombardiers, we would maybe see some law fares being given to the locals to mm -hmm. be able to afford to move around, maybe out of the out of the country and maybe within the country. But then, as you say, because of the costs right. that they've incurred since they began uh, operations in August twenty eighth, um, they could have t they could take more time. Yeah, they, they could take they could they take could, more time because right. right now they're looking at the expansion, five destinations, looking at how can we increase from five to ten or fifteen or thirty. So maybe right now. Focus is on expansion, not local local market. But I'm looking yes. at the future and I'm thinking, um, in the future, once the Uganda Airlines actually takes off and starts to make profit, um, that I'm sure is an option that they're looking into, mm -hmm. whereby they'll be able to buy more aircraft that yes. now will service the internal market. Mm -hmm. um, we're all looking forward to that. But they said, for that to happen, for that reality to be achieved, we mm -hmm. ought mm -hmm. to be Ugandan in mm -hmm. terms of supporting the Uganda Airlines, which mm -hmm. I support mm -hmm. at a hundred percent. No, me the main issue. It has always been domestic ter uh, tourism. Mm. Domestic tourism. How can we involve our people when it comes to uh, enjoying? the pleasures right here in Uganda because mm -hmm. many people are coming out of the country and enjoying here in Uganda a refugee has more status than a Uganda a national right here. I don't know what happens, but uh, the natives right here are suffering and foreigners are getting to enjoy. So me, I would urge government to step up to the plate and find a way to include our people right here in Uganda by offering incent incentives that are a bit cheaper and affordable for our people. Yes, how many can afford a trip to London to just go and tour London using our bombardiers? <laughs> and Romeo, you'll be the same person right yes. here, castigating government. Um, maybe in the near ten, in the near future, maybe ten years from now, if uh, they come back and tell mm -hmm. us, "Hey guys, it's been ten years, it's been twenty years, it's been thirty years," and all the money that we invested in starting Uganda Airlines. Mm -hmm. We've not recouped. You'll still be the same person castigating. So it's it's mm -hmm. a tricky balance, yes, but yes. I'm sure in in, in their plannings, that's uh, one of the key mm -hmm. aspects they're looking mm -hmm. at. Um, uh, of course, uh, that uh, is a, a key conversation, um, still subject to debate. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I get where you're coming mm -hmm. from, mm -hmm. um, uh, but uh, in the meantime, yes. I think the tourism players as well um, mm -hmm. ought to look at what you're saying. Mm -hmm. How do we promote domestic tourism? Mm -hmm. How can we make sure that Ugandans as well, you know, get an opportunity to to enjoy? the beauty mm -hmm. of their own um, you know land motherland so to speak so indeed yeah. well the story has been highlighted in the daily monitor page three which you could only get at two thousand shillings if you're uncomfortable with the hard copy get yourself a softer copy by visiting epaper.nationmedia.com forward slash ug we are still dissecting the contents of the daily monitor to give a full bird's eye panorama view of what you should expect as your day progresses still on page three a very big headline now you remember we've been Witnessing some murders. Mm -hmm. You remember Joshua Tereho, Marina Tumokunde, you remember Mar uh, Maria Nagirinya, you remember Ronald uh, Chitaimboa, and a host of other people. So there were comments from people saying that uh, there sh should be stiffer penalties when it comes to people who commit crimes to, as a deterrent. Judiciary actually has responded. Jud so judiciary is plotting stiffer penalties for criminals. This is on page three of the Daily Monitor. The judiciary is uh, drafting stiffer sentences for criminals who have committed serious offenses. In an interview with Daily Monitor, the principal judge, Yorokamu Bamwine, said the draft of the new sentencing guidelines was sent to the Judiciary Rules Committee headed by the Chief Justice Bat Katurebe for further scrutiny and approval. Justice Bamwine explained that the current guidelines have a wide range of sentencing, which causes huge disparities in sentencing for cases of uh, nearly similar facts. Now, Justice Bamwini further revealed that in the new sentencing guidelines under the new category of very serious offenses, a death penalty 
will be the starting point, and the range gap will go down to 35 years imprisonment. What does this mean? It means that once an accused has been convicted, the trial judge will consider the death sentence first, which may later be relaxed downward during mitigation if the convict presents such compelling reasons that warrant reduction in severity of the sentence. Now, currently, what were we dealing with? The sentencing guidelines provide for 35 years as the starting point to a maximum death sentence. Wow, Mala. Mm -hmm. Do you think a death penalty is a deterrent when it comes to crime? Wow, that's a tricky one. That's a tricky one because... Because uh, most Ugandans, this is what they've been praying for over the weeks uh, or months to say, or mm. even years, that there should be some stiffer penalty when it comes to uh, hardcore criminals. You know, when you look at death penalty, yes. it raises a lot of, you know, debate. Mm -hmm. um, when was it just last year, we were having different players, especially from the facet of human rights, uh, you know, activists, and they were coming through to say that is death penalty the solution really to fighting crime yeah in amnesty international has been at the forefront fighting this exactly internationally, internationally yes. um we're having different bodies saying that guys the solution is not a death penalty but of course um it it, it is and it is a conversation that uh, ought to be debated um depending on who you are i don't know what you feel hashtag morning at ntv are you pro death penalty or are you pro life imprisonment you know there are also those two balancing factors i also um, have my reservations on the death penalty right. because right now you could be innocent and they put you on the death penalty but then yeah i think due process should take course yeah investigations first and then yeah because now they are considering the death penalty before anything else mm. Maybe if you pr uh, uh, front some evidence that is ex exonerating you, that's when they can water it down to maybe 35 years imprisonment, right. something like that. Yeah. I still, I still don't think that we are. Okay, I'm a journalist. I'm not supposed to give my opinion, but mm -hmm. when I look at it critically, I don't mm -hmm. think we are ready to to pass the death penalty, so to speak, mm -hmm. especially looking at the loopholes in terms of investigations. Um, uh, how many people, Romeo, you are in the activist yeah, space. Yes. How many people have you heard um, have actually, you know, um, either been sentenced, you know, in jail for mm -hmm. X amount of years, mm -hmm. and then a few years down the line as they're in jail, mm -hmm. it comes to the fore that, hey, this mm -hmm. guy was actually innocent. Yes, it does happen. So you can imagine if this true. guy was actually on death penalty, mm -hmm. gone, that's a life gone, and mm -hmm. then years later, you come and realize that this guy was actually innocent. Mm -hmm. So we have to first fix the loops, um, the loopholes that are there in terms of investigations. Mm -hmm. Once we get that right, mm -hmm. then I think we can escalate in terms of, um, you know, getting, you know, tougher and stricter, you know, measures in terms indeed, of... Um, indeed, Mala, as we advocate for due process, we should also understand where government is coming from. This is to just offer a deterrent because of the matters that have been rife in the country. And they believe, well, if we do something in this regard, maybe put a, a death penalty on the table, these people might, you know, do change. You think, do you think it's the magic bullet to sorting crime? It's not the magic bullet, but then gov this is government's way of saying, okay, we are trying in this regard, we are not just sitting on our, ha on our hands. But then time will tell if this will actually be a deterrent or just a bullet in there in their foot. All You're right. still watching Morning at NTV. Right about now, we are going to take a very short break and we'll be right back with more exhilarating information. Press review is done.